This year I turned 50 and I had said to Hazel, my wife, I fancy a personal challenge this year. Eight days after that, Mark rang me up. He said, Stevie, I was on the internet last night. I have the job for you. Um, this 100 mile, five day in the Himalayas. And I asked him, were you talking to Hazel? And he says, no. And he says, well, I'm your man. I thought it was meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, give your drawback and finish back. Please hand over your drawback and finish back. The Himalayan 100 is a 20-year-old stage race that chaperones athletes from around the world on a five-day tour of Darjeeling district in northeastern India. The race serves to introduce Westerners to the culture, bureaucracy, and mountains of the Himalaya. Runners from all six inhabited continents converge in Manyabanjang for the start. Stage one begins with a monster climb. In fact, the whole first day is rather punishing, with long stretches of open ridgeline running punctuated with small border villages. The surface is lovingly referred to as cobble boulders. While technically it is a road tracing India's border with Nepal, the footing is more treacherous than most western trail races. For the first three stages, the left side of the road is Nepal and the right, India. Eight stations are stocked with simple, nourishing foods. Racing at altitude over rugged terrain means one thing to most competitors, walking. The first stage ends at almost 12,000 feet, a mile higher than it starts. By then, most racers are feeling the altitude, if not the miles. It is tough. It is one tough race. I'm just exhausted. Nothing more to say. It's, uh, it's character building. My character is fairly built at the moment. The day finishes at Sandakpu with brisk winds and cooler temperatures. Racers collect their belongings and find their way to rustic cabins where they'll spend the night. Trickling in one by one, runners gather at the mess hall to share war stories in a welcome bowl of hot soup. It's cold up there, so racers turn in early and drift off to sleep to the whir of electric generators. Racers wake to thin air, frosty temperatures, and stunning views of the highest mountains on Earth. That's Mount Everest to the west, getting the first rays of sun. The mountain vistas are now clear, and everybody bustles around getting pictures. That's Kanchenjunga in the background to the north. Over 28,000 feet tall, it is the world's third tallest peak. The course races out and back along 10 miles of the Nepalese border. A brutal first day and a cold night in a sleeping bag make for a slow start. Here come the leaders, pushing the pace. Racers see the big mountains throughout the day. The sights are breathtaking, but so is the altitude. Most of the running takes place on downhills. Yaks are often around just off the track. They do this all day long. Nepalese porters also show up along the road. They are often there retrieving supplies ferried in by Indian jeeps. The villagers hike up to the border from the Nepalese side, hoist the 100-pound bags onto their backs, and carry them home. The head strap is called an amlo, and it is ubiquitous in this region for carrying just about anything. This poor kid didn't even weigh as much as the bag he was trying to lift.
Much of the support staff get to the race under their own power. Some fellows trek three days to get there, work for three days, and then hike three days back home. Kind of gives a cultural context to a five-day stage race. I once again congratulate you for doing great job by all of you. Second day has been completed very nicely. Race director Mr. C.S. Pandey presides over an epic discussion of the event's biggest day. You have done most complicated part yesterday, but still one more day of the complication is still left. That is tomorrow. Runners wake in Sadakpu for the last time of the trip. They've got the jitters and anxiously await the start of this marathon day. The first 10 or so miles are shared with day two. Runners reach Mole, day two's turnaround point, and head down an eight-mile dogleg to Falut and back. Then it's a 6,000-foot single-track descent on their way to the marathon finish at Rimbik. With the marathon behind them, most competitors have shifted into survival mode. That's assistant race director Mansi giving the day's briefing. In Rimbik, you are at around 6,100 feet. You will go up to 4,900 feet down the halfway. Then you will again go up to 6,500, Palma Jua. From there, there will be bus waiting for you to bring you people back here. Day four is all pavement running what amounts to one long downhill and one long uphill. As you can see, it's still rather steep. Well done, well done, well done, well done. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Please, please come. Please here. First dry your hand with towel, then sign please. Despite the smoother surface, most racers' greatest relief is to be done with it and hop the bus back to Rimbik. That, that will do for me. I need to be in the top 10 because I didn't bring any warm kit. So if I wasn't in the top 10, I'd have a cold weight. But, uh, hey, thank you very much. Es ist eine herrliche Gegend hier, lauter nette Leute, Gegend ist schön, Leute sind schön, Wetter könnte etwas schöner sein. Ich bin rundherum glücklich. Ah, Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I was really, I felt really good the first half. Really, really good, really, really strong. My legs weren't hurting at all. And that downhill, but as soon as I hit the flat, or any slight uphills, I could really feel it. And that uphill was just awful. <sighs> but it's done, I don't have to do it again. <sighs> right, I'm going to puke somewhere quietly. That night, everyone is involved in a cultural exchange event arranged by the race staff. A two-hour bus ride brings athletes back to Palmajua. There, they'll start the fifth and final stage of the race, once they let this guy go by. Thank you.
Enjoy the I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. Oh, that is, yes. yeah. Well done. <laughs> The Himalayan 100 is a well-organized introduction to Himalayan travel. Entrants get to see the rolling plantations of renowned Darjeeling tea, take harrowing bus rides on narrow roads, learn about Indian culture, and traverse a rugged and beautiful course. For many, the race is the challenge of a lifetime. The trails were exciting, invigorating, demanding, demoralizing, endless, relentless. They were uh, so energy sapping, but such invigoration to have done it and achieved and such a challenge to have conquered. It's brilliant. It's once in a lifetime. Great. Namaste.